All I saw growing up in the ancient city of Kano in northern Nigeria, where I was born, were pyramids of granite and huge silos for storage grains. My friends were ch children of agro merchants and traders at the 48-year-old Dawano market, and of course is the largest and biggest food market in Africa today. At that tender age, I already knew what it meant to buy, to sell, to store, and to be out of stock. And as such, trading and Nigerian optimism has been part of my DNA. I've since moved from watching price determination at the local agricultural markets in my childhood to keeping a close eye on local FX and securities markets. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the forum to discuss Nigeria at this year's TNF. And with me are Tobe Inadoze, who is Divisional Head for Technology and Innovation at the CSCS, the Central Securities Clearing System. Kodi Oguchi, who is the Group Chief Operating Officer at the FMDQ Group. Samo Cheho, who looks after global market. He's currently the head global market at Stambika BTC Bank. And Insikak John, who is head enterprise innovation hub with the Nigerian Stock Exchange. So these gentlemen and lady will be helping us to unpack the conversations around Nigeria, Africa's hope, which we all think is Nigeria. I'll be starting off with Tobe. And Tobe, I would like you to give a view. Um, we know the CSCS is an A-rated Thomas Murray uh, CSD and the CSCS has been the front runner of very many innovation around the depository sector, including blockchain for corporate action announcements, um, et cetera, et cetera. Could you just give us a view what the CSCS has been up to in the last uh, few months, and especially with the impact of COVID? Um, thanks a lot, um, um, Babatun. As CSCS, um, we uh, pride ourselves in those very few of these that have the rating. And one of the things we've been doing uh, since the last the rating is we've been trying to improve the market and uh, to elaboration in the market. One of them we've done, found out that the market is heavily fragmentized in terms of the exchange yeah. of information. And so what we've decided to do is to roll out an API, an integration layer to connect with different stakeholders in the market and share information seamlessly. We've rolled that out and then um, we're glad to, you know, announced that a couple of people have joined and um, a number of processes which before now had been manual and difficult to conclude. With the integration platform which we have rolled out, it's easier to exchange information. Account opening that was formerly you know, very manual and prone to quite a couple of errors is now seamless and instant through the API. Um, and a couple of other services which we are adding on, I hope and believe is the next time you know, if other rating is done, these improvements would not just for us, but for the markets be a huge plus. Thank you. Thank you, Toby. Uh, Sam, this question is for you. Nigeria has experienced illiquidity in the FX market for a while now, about eight months or so. What do you think is responsible for these short, such shortages? And as you're aware, the CBN has introduced forwards as a condition for sports. What would you say is the rationale for this condition, seeing that most clients do not find it comfortable to be further locked down for another five months? Thank you very much, Tunde. Um, the oil price decline brought about by demand shock as an aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic impacted on Nigerian foreign reserves. Also, the pandemic triggered risk of sentiment among foreign portfolio uh, investors who along with the central bank have been the FX, I mean the biggest FX liquidity uh, provider in the market. Hence a combination of lower accretion to external reserve from lower oil prices and significant portfolio exit from the Nigerian fin financial market meant that the C CBN reserves were fast declining and the CBN had to take measures to ration the FX liquidity to halt the fast persistent decline in the reserve. Uh, with regards to the forwards, 
All that the central bank is doing is pure cash flow management. Uh, the outlook for oil prices and oil demand remain quite murky, and with very low yield on fixed income uh, instruments in the country, the CBN is not very optimistic of foreign portfolio inflows in the near term. Uh, to this end, we think that the central bank is trying to manage the decline in the reserve so that it is not precipitous and trying to spread the FX obligation over a period of time. With the singular hope that the economic and global conditions will improve in the medium in the medium term. Thank you very much. So I'll head to Cody. Cody. Uh, Cody looks after operations generally for the FMDQ exchange. She's currently the group COO for uh, the FMDQ group. Uh, Cody, we see the FMDQ as a very key financial market infrastructure in Nigeria. And the FMDQ, in its wisdom, has established presence in all the key pillars within the capital market, from the exchange uh, to the CCP and, of course, uh, to the depository. Um, Cody, can you give us a view as to what are the key groundbreaking initiatives that the FMDQ has been uh, driving in the market in the last couple of months? Thank you, um, Babatunde. Indeed, um, FMDQ is a financial market infrastructure group um, with businesses across the exchange, central counterparty, and depository, um, as, as well as private markets, um, as, you, as you mentioned. And in the past couple of months, I would say that our focus has been around um, completing this important FMI structure. And, and that is why one of the things that we pursued um, this year was um, applying to the, C to the SEC for our license as um, a central counterparty for which approval in principle has been granted. Um, it is obvious that for the derivatives market to thrive and for us to even build a derivatives market in Nigeria, we would need a CCP. And one of the things that we had been waiting for was the review of CAMA, which has thankfully been signed in, and that changes the framework, the legal framework for the market. So it is a very good thing for the market. So now it is time indeed for the CCP to operate effectively and help bring about the um, much needed derivatives market in Nigeria. So the key focuses for FMDQ over the co last couple of months would be, um, first of all, making sure that the framework was right, legal framework, and that has been dealt with with the CAMA 2020, making sure that we had a, a CCP readiness um, structure. So whilst we were waiting for all of these things, we were also putting things in place to ensure that our CCP is ready so these are some of the things that we're doing in the market to create the um, right architecture, the right infrastructure, going through um, sessions from our FMDQ Academy, trying to bring market um, um, education and capacity building for the market again, because with launching new products in the derivatives market, you need to bring the market participants up to speed. Interesting points you've made, Cody, and it appears you're having so much happening within the FMDQ group. Sam, I have um, one more question for you, Sam. We, we are told in the market that the World Bank uh, $1.5 billion um, dollar loan um, has been delayed uh, based on some conditionalities. Do you foresee that this disbursement will help liquidity in the FX window? Um, if you have a view of that, that would be critical to determine whether we would see liquidity back in the market as quickly as possible. Uh, I think the liquidity in the IEFX market will be purely determined by the stance of the central bank as regards uh, FX sale to the market. You recall that when the $3.4 billion was disbursed to the market, the CBN did not go on a spending spree and started uh, selling dollars to the market. Uh, they actually hesitated. Everything would depend on the stance of the central bank as to uh, how much they would want to sell into the interbank window. But I don't see them changing from what is currently happening. So I am not optimistic that the 1.5 will materially change the dial as regards the liquidity into the FX market. Fantastic. Thanks again, Sam, for your insight. In CICAC, this 
is over to you at the Nigerian Stock Exchange. We know you've been leading quite a lot in terms of digital initiatives in the capital market. Last year, we recall that you had an hackathon, um, which was birth to unlock disruptive potential uh, in the capital market. Could you give us an, an insight how that has gone and what kind of solutions has been birthed into the market to steer participations of millennials in trading and investment in, in Nigeria? Could you give us an insight to that? Thank you very much, Tinde. Thanks for having me. Yes, so if you can recall, uh, extent of that's what we call it, was very successful. And we targeted bringing retail investors into the market. And it's been very exciting. And we know that there are 10 finalists. We, we, we maintain very close contact with them. But the top three, we actually have active investments in them. This year, we are doing an internal hackathon to also drive participation in our market. And next year, we'll turn with even a bigger platform of the hackathon. So yes, the hackathon was very successful. We are happy with the gains. Thank you, Sikak. This is very exciting how the NSC is helping to bring youths into the capital market by encouraging their ingenuity. This is brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, maybe on a point around the impact of COVID on digital imper um, imperatives and aspiration of the NSC. Do you see COVID-19 as more or less helping to accelerate that digital growth or impede it? I'll say COVID-19 um, has helped to accelerate um, the digital, the journey to digital. Uh, and why I say so is because COVID-19 is actually a test of digital resilience, you know, of the market, of our organization and the market as a whole. I think we've done great so far in terms of our response. And um, even before the entire country went into the shutdown, we had executed some protocols, all right, for remote work, remote transactions, remote trading. And then we had, you know, dimensioned it into different phases, depending on the impact of the pandemic. And we've just been working based on that script and responding you know, to what's happening all over the world. But like you've seen, we've, we've maintained interactions within our market such that, you know, nobody dropped the ball. The market has been on. So in general, I think I think that this has been a taste of digital resilience. It's been a, a sort of blessing because no matter how much you simulate these things and try to respond to it in a test environment, you don't really know what happens until it hits you. And this has been a reality hit and we responded creditably. So I think it's been a blessing in disguise because it's, it's helped us to test our resilience and we've done creditably well as an organization and as a market. Thank you again, Insikak, um, for giving us the positives of um, COVID to your digital growth and digital initiatives. I guess to be in one minute, um, as we round off, can you just give us a view from the CSCS? There's been a lot of conversation around a single account structure in the market. What are your views and how is the CSCS helping to ensure that the market moves to uh, a much more efficient way of trading rather than what it is today. CSS is at the um, front line of en ensuring this happens. Um, internally, we have prepped and reworked processes and the system to be able to accommodate that. So we are completely ready to roll that out, along with a couple of things which will also make it more efficient. I mean, which of course, um, increasing... Um, sorry, reducing the settlement timeline so that, you know, the trust within the system becomes much more. But CSCS is just one part. And one of the things which we've discovered in this market is we need to work closer with stakeholders to make sure it happens. I think the major bulk now stops at the table of the custodian group themselves. It's going to involve a whole lot of change management, not just for the custodians, for the custodians and for the brokers and a few investors who are used to the current structure. Um, so that's change management and the acceptance of the new things which it will bring to the table. Thank you for that, uh, Toby. I would go to you, Sam, on a final note. The budget for Nigeria has been presented to the National Assembly. And the president presented a budget of 13.08 trillion. However, there's a deficit of 
for the budget 2021. How do you how do you think the government will cover this deficit? Uh, I think this government is in a sweet spot at the moment. Our yields are very low right now. Uh, so if you ask me, I think that deficit, I see them significantly borrowing from the local market, considering where yields are at the moment. And with the prognosis of yield also being lower into next year. Thank you very, very much for that. Uh, finally, on your side, Cody, what is the FMDQ up to? What should we be expecting in the next few months? Um, as an FMI, um, FMDQ is working on um, strengthening the status of all the entities. Um, so as you know, we've been an exchange for close to seven years, it'll be seven in November. Um, we've been an exchange for seven years and we've been able to um, put some initiatives in the fixed income market um, that has taken the market some, some levels um, beyond where it was when we started. And what is FMDQ looking for in the, in the near term? We're looking to grow our, our scope into other markets as a full um, exchange. We have received the STC's approval for our equity market um, rules. Um, so that is one of the things in the front burner for us. We're putting in the right infrastructure and working with growth companies to build a market. Because what we're trying to do is grow the scope of the market. We're also, as I spoke um, earlier, bent on working with market participants on bringing these thriving derivatives markets into being because it's very, very, very important for our market. So our CCP um, and our exchange are working on this with the, um, from the derivatives perspective, and we're looking to launch at least two products in the near term. Um, we're also, um, side of it, putting in the right structures to ensure that the market benefits from the choice and for there to be growth in our market in terms of we've seen the dirt of um, our infrastructure in Nigeria. And we think that one of the keys, um, key factors towards fixing these infrastructural debts is supporting the private market. And that is what our um, private market business is looking at because we think that's where the future of Nigeria is going. So those are some of the key things we're doing across the FMI to ensure and support market development in Nigeria, but ultimately... Um, to help with economic development and to help to create prosperity for Nigeria and for Nigeria. Thank you, Kordi, helping to create prosperity for Nigeria and the entire country. Thank you very much. And ladies and gentlemen, like I mentioned, this is why my optimism of Nigeria is high. Looking at my childhood from when I began to experience the trading of granites in Northern Nigeria up till now when I am fully involved in the local FX market and securities market. And based on the conversations we've had today, you would see that there are quite a number of things happening in the Nigerian market. And this is where I uh, derive my optimism from. And that's why it's been part of my DNA. So I would like to thank my panelists, Tobe Inadoze. I would like to thank Kodi Ogoji, I'd like to thank Sam Ocheho and last but not the least, Insika John for helping to have a conversation around Nigeria and why Nigeria remains the Africa's hope. Thank you very much, lady and gentlemen.